Hello, I'm Tim Sandal and I'm back with you with another coronavirus video. I've taken a break for a bit, but um, back now with you with a few um, perhaps more um, focused updates. Um, so today's topic is about coronavirus and the asymptomatic individual. So it's been established um, that many people infected with coronavirus are asymptomatic. And while people who are fall into that category can spread the virus, um, is it correct that the virus is not actually harming them? Well, a new study published in Nature still infers there may be a degree of lung damage. So someone who's infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus and remains asymptomatic, now that's free of coughing, uh, fever, experience fatigue and the various other common signs of infection um, can pass on the virus and also they can also perhaps be affected by the infection. And this new study in Nature reveals that the virus is still causing some harm in these people's lungs. And this may uh, be mild and it may be reversible but the effects will vary between individuals. So this study is in Nature Medicine and it reveals a high rate of minor lung inflammation in many individuals who are exhibiting no outward symbols of the coronavirus disease COVID-19. And this study is titled Clinical and Immunological sorry, I'll say that again, uh, clinical and immunological assessment of asymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 infections. And this is significant because asymptomatic carriers of coronaviruses is an understudied area. And it's unclear just how many people are asymptomatic carriers of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And at present, this proportion of the population is anywhere between 6 and 45%. There are a number of contradictory studies at the moment. However, what is important is that the data available so far says that 40% um, of the infections are coming from people who are asymptomatic carriers. So the importance of understanding what exactly asymptomatic means in the context of the coronavirus is brought to light by a different wave of research um, looking at uh, transmission between healthcare workers. And here um, virologists have found um, high levels of asymptomatic infections during the peak of the pandemic in London. And these results have been published as part of a uh, medical correspondence review in the medical journal The Lancet and these highlight the importance of routinely screening healthcare staff for the virus as part of the measures taken to pr protect both frontline workers and also patients. Now the data that this London study was drawn from consisted of twice weekly self-administered nose and throat swabs together with monthly blood samples where the blood samples were subjected to high sensitivity serological assays and these were taken from um, 200 frontline health staff over a period of several months. And what's of interest here is that 45% of healthcare staff sampled from this population of 200 people showed evidence of having been infected with the coronavirus within the month that the testing started. And this perhaps shows how easily the virus can spread within a high populated indoor environment, such as a hospital. Of significance is the finding that 38% of infections were not associated with any symptoms at all. So based on this particular study, 45% of people are infected, 38% of that 45% are asymptomatic. And this was within seven days of a positive sample having been recorded. So if you want to look at this, um, check out The Lancet and look for a study called Pandemic Peak, 
SARS-CoV-2 infection and seroconversion rates in London frontline healthcare workers. Now, while some commentators downplay the asymptomatic variables as something less important than seeking to achieve, say, this concept of herd immunity that we've discussed on um, previous videos, it still remains, and it's important to point out that we still don't know exactly what herd immunity means. Um, and this relates to the difficulties in defining the herd immunity threshold. And this relates to defining um, that proportion of the population that needs to be immune in order for an infectious disease to become stable in that community. So, for example, the herd immunity concept depends upon how many people each infected person actually infects. And this number will vary considerably by location, for example. And there's an interesting uh, article in a magazine called Quanta, where a scientist called Kevin Hartnett presents some interesting mathematics exploring just how complex herd immunity is to define and to measure. So if you check out a paper called The Tricky Math of Herd Immunity, COVID-19. That, that's a very interesting um, read. Okay, so this is a slightly shorter video than normal, but um, please check out other coronavirus related videos on my YouTube channel. And if you want to receive regular updates from me, please click on the subscribe button below. And as always, please continue to stay safe. I've been Dr. Tim Sandal and until next time.